Good morning. This morning we're going to do a lesson on what Parlay Ideas is. And um, here, let's just go back to my dashboard. So this is once you log in, you can click new to Parlay and running a PLC and go to their videos. Um, you can uh, get certified, right? New to Parlay. So right here, it takes you right to their Google Drive with all of the walkthroughs and like how to Parlay. But I wanted to show it to you in a quick demonstration of how I've used it in my class. So let's go back to Parlay. Uh, it does not matter which class I click on. So let's go to block two. And when we see block two, that we are loading the round table um, for World War I discussion and review. Um, I started using this one. I found out about it in February and uh, really liked the collaborative feel to it. Uh, I don't know why it's taking so long. Let's see. There it is. That's weird. Really? There it is. Okay, so um, this is what it looks like from the teacher's point of view. Let's just go with um, the actual lesson that we have here. You see that I've tied our course exam description standards right into, um, right into the learning goals. And that I, because it was their first time using Parlay, I clicked, added this for them to click and see a student guide to Parlay. And it goes right to a Google Drive for them to see. And so um, I told the kids to look at these videos and readings before discussing the questions. So I gave them some filtered kind of lessons to go through so that they could see through um, the information. And of course, I linked to a PDF that was pretty decent in discussing World War I. Um, and then I gave them these five questions. And now five questions um, may not seem like a lot, but in Parlay Ideas, when you've got the kids trying to collaborate, and the whole idea is for them to read through their, their peers' responses and comment on that. So um, five is probably the max that I would do. Three is probably the um, ideal number that you would want to use with that. Um, but again, this was in February. The kids knew each other. They know their writing. They've done a lot of collaborative work. So this was pretty simple for them to answer. And so um, after those videos, they went through answered those questions, and then here's the feedback information. So after you submit your response, read at least three of your classmates' responses and post a, rep a plot reply. So is the post correct? Did you find it and understand from it from your reading or are videos differently or the same as your classmate? And can you build on their ideas? And so um, getting them to answer those kind of questions and re be reflective is probably one of the hardest things that we have to do as AP teachers, but getting them to be aware that somebody's going to give them responses um, is pretty, pretty cool in their growth. So let's just um, go through just a little logistics of this. You know, the original prompt here, the questions again, but over here um, we can manage students you can just have them answer or join this code, kind of like a Kahoot or a Quizlet Live um, when they enter that code into Parlay Ideas. Or you can give the link and you can share the link right on Classroom. You can see that Classroom is one of the options there. Um, and then here, you can see that those are the real names of the students, but I have, sorry, I had them turned off so that they weren't responding just to their friends and they didn't necessarily know who their friends were when they were doing this. Um, I had this as a lesson live in the classroom, but as we think back to the quarantine and we think of what was, um, what was missing was that collaborative approach 
And I think that this program would be really, really good for us to use at the start of the school year to build collaboration and, you know, make it a little more simple than what I did in this first lesson, but allow the kids to interact back and forth. So let's go back down to one of their submissions. So this one right here, here are those five responses, right? And then here are some of the comments that were made. Now look at this one. I like the answer to the first question. Your point on the Russian Revolution and the effects it had were well presented and interesting. I would like you to build on these ideas. That is the ideal question or response. Um, I really like the way that they talk to them. Um, and so you can go through and see that at least three people have made that. Here's one that says, I partially agree with your, your response. And then, you know, here's again, like here's a back and forth. And in reality, we want to see this back and forth kind of dialogue that our students are building with each other. When we go back to this tab right here, these are the comments, there were eight of them. And then here's the assessment. So I can give them an assessment on were you critically thinking? And I, I actually set this out of five. And then were you communicating? Did you collaborate? And were you accurate? And that's the feedback that they get from me. Um, really, really nice feedback. You see here that the class average was 2.3 comments made and that this student um, had made seven comments. And that was just very nice. The applause thing is if they agreed with it. None of them really knew what that meant at the time. And so um, they kind of kept the applause thing to themselves. So if we go to the summary part, now this is where I believe as a teacher with feedback, it's very uh, meaningful. And so when I click on this, it's going to show me how many responses we had, how many gave at least one comment, and how many received one comment. And so it says reflective questions. Um, you know, what do they say about our discussion? We can talk about this with the kids. I went through this with them and said, you know, I'm striving for 100% to submit a response. Um, it gives, I would like 100% to give at least one comment. And again, I'd like for everyone to receive a comment. And so we definitely talked about that with the kids after the lesson so that they could see what we were striving for. Um, in your evaluation as a teacher, part of our evaluation in Florida is to monitor the room or monitor for understanding. And if we can get 100% and it can be something that I can show an administrator, look, I had 100% participation in that. I had at least 100, in this case, 86% giving one comment. Um, we can look for understanding further down in the conversation of this, this, uh, this thing. See, it says 64 words was a common length. Um, and then here are some average, uh, just reflection questions that you can look at with just on comment length. They, um, it's gonna show you that the kids are using more words than average on that with 64. And then um, you can see if they're right just by the word cloud that is um, generated. And so you can kind of look at that. Again, there's reflective questions that go with that. What words stood out? Did any surprise you? And so I don't think I marked any model uh, submissions with this one, um, but if there were model submissions, you can put a little star on them and you can see that, um, you know, like, did the kids actually notice that it was a model submission kind of thing? 
And then this to me is probably the most powerful part because it's just a visual, kind of like a Harkness tracking of where the comments were going to. Now, again, it's not like live tracking, so you can't go, it went from this person to this person. But let's just see, for this person right here, you know, they received one and gave one to each other. Um, in this case, right, well, he gave seven. Um, here's one that he gave two and received one. So I think our goal as teachers is to give one, get one kind of thing with this. So you don't necessarily want to see like the little, you know, um, thing like this where it says he gave one, but he didn't receive one. Do you see that? So when I click off of that, you can see that there was dialogue throughout the class from one, class, one kid to another. And our goal is to see three. So there's one, two, and three. This student only had one. This student only had one, right? And so um, it kind of is just a nice visual for you as a teacher that you are um, able to see who's dominating the conversation and who's not participating in the conversation. But I really like um, this aspect of it because as a teacher, you're able to, to guide and see where that conversation is going. And so that is a just general how Parlay works with students. Um, I would tell you to watch the videos that Parlay have um, on how to, uh, you know, when you hit create new here, do you want it to be online or live? Um, I'll tell you my live ones that I had, I had a couple of them. Um, the kids had a hard time in the fact that they, um, here are the questions that we were guiding and talking about. Uh, the, when we were live, the kids had our time tapping in and tapping out because I think that we had done so many Socratic seminars before this parlay ideas came about that they were just used to talking to each other and looking at each other and having conversation versus clicking a computer and um, hitting uh, like tap in, tap out. They also had an opportunity during um, the live discussion to type notes. So the computers were a little distracting with that. And again, I believe it's just because I didn't start the year with it. So when I start the year with this, um, I think that it's going to be um, a little more fluid in how the live works. Um, again, I liked it because they could, you know, challenge, have a new idea, build on a thing or question. Um, and so I threw the questions in one by one. They didn't all just pop up for the kids. So as they were talking, I could hit a plus um, at the bottom here, add a new conversation and um, have them look at that. And I tried to regulate this so that everyone was, com was conversing. Um, and so we had 100% participation rate. But you see here, it's a little different of the conversation where it's times tapped in. And tapped in is just that I'm tapping in to have conversation. I'm going to be the one speaking. And some of them were really good at tapping in and some of them just were good at talking. So um, they weren't really good at tapping in. But you can see, um, I can uh, see for each student how many minutes they spent engaged in either challenging, correcting, or discussing the questions. And so um, I really liked this. Um, you know, this student right here, they were so, because they could see who had an, tapped in and who had not, that they were so encouraging for this one student because he never talks. He scores A's on everything, but he never talks. 
and that the kids were encouraging him, come on, tap in so that we can hear you and we can get 100%. So um, it was kind of fun for him uh, just to have the, the attention. But, you know, here's 31 minutes, here's 38 minutes, 28. Yeah. So you see that, again, with reflection, it says, what does it tell you about the discussion? So the kids would see, oh, hey, I dominated. I didn't mean to dominate, but I just forgot to tap out kind of thing. Um, so uh, do you see number three? It says, what was it because they were talking a lot or spending a lot of time waiting for the chance to contribute? So you can tap in and you're waiting and that affects the time. Um, again, I, I liked this, you know, new ideas, challenges, build on, we had nine questions. Um, we could ask them to ask more questions. Um, and, you know, it gives us those kind of questions, but here's the reflective questions. Um, you know, what was more valuable than the other? What do you think um, the type of conversation that we were having, uh, what was important, what was better? And so, and then it breaks it down, right? So that we can see that lowly, um, had a new idea. She challenged three times. She built on six times and she had one question. So you can see that and hit expand all for all the students. Um, you know, it, it's funny because the kids don't necessarily all have the same abilities, but they do value the peer talk that they are able to have. So here are the reflective questions for this piece right here, who tapped in more than others, um, who didn't contribute, um, what, what did we notice about this? And Sarah, the kids just talked about how um, the conversation, it, it was hard because it was again February and we have been doing Socratics since August. So I will be anxious to see how this starts and builds on in the year. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate um, your conversation. Follow in the comments.